We are teaching a machine how to play tennis. This is an interesting one. The results were unexpected. Let's go! First, we have to define a reward structure. In this case, I went with rewarding the agent when hitting the ball and punishing the agent when missing. Yeah, might seem like a pretty obvious choice, but there are a few different ways to do it and they all have drastic different outcomes. The next important thing is, what information does the agent actually receive? Of course, it needs his own position and the position of the ball. Only the X and Y coordinates are relevant in this case. Then his own speed and the speed of the ball. And that's it! Many of you wonder, why don't we go with visual data? One big drawback against visual data is its size. I'll show you. Let's take a single pixel of a 100 by 100 image. This single pixel needs one byte of space in a grayscale image. This is because the pixel can have 256 different shades of gray. This means a 100 by 100 pixel image is 10 kilobytes in size in total. Nothing a modern computer can't handle. But Let's compare this against the observation data I chose. The position and speed of the player and ball are only 16 byte per frame. This is 16 byte versus 10,000 byte. That's a huge difference. And it saves us a lot of compute power we can put into training the agent. So let's go! After only one hour of training, the agent is playing really good. They are playing perfectly. In some sense, uh, too perfect. No matter how long the match keeps on going, the score always stays at 0-0. Zero, zero. It feels like they are serving the ball to each other like in a friendly match of tennis. And then I thought, Wait a minute, both players are controlled by the same brain and they always train as a team. So what happens if I split it up and take an agent from a different training instance? Hmm, let's see. Both of these agents were trained for one hour. Which of these agents is the better player? I don't know, but in some sense this isn't even the point. This time they are scoring points and not just playing a friendly match. They were not trained as a team, so they couldn't adapt to the enemy. Let's do a resume. We had a really interesting outcome and it really goes to show how much influence we have over the AI. Often there's the impression that the AI is how it is and we as humans have no saying over the way it's acting. But this is not the case. We can nudge the AI in certain directions. The reward structure and the observations were defined in a way to support a defensive style of playing. The AI just cares about hitting the ball and not actually scoring points. Maybe you have noticed that the AI doesn't even receive the position of the enemy, so there is no possibility in reacting to the enemy and maybe play a tricky move. I think the key takeaway here is that we have some control on how the agent evolves. Let me know what game or environment you want to see next. I'm really curious about your ideas. I already have read some great ideas in the comments of the last two videos. Stay tuned and subscribe to my channel to see my latest content I post every week. And if you really like my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you and goodbye.